I've decided to make another video and this time I'd like to talk about the end of the world because that is a topic that many Bible believing Christians are familiar with and yet don't completely understand. It gives them a lot of reason for fear and justifiably so if they've read many of the world words in the Bible. And so in this video what I hope to do is explain the reasons why God would be so angry that he'd want to destroy the entire world. And so a lot of Christians think it's self-evident when they look around the world at what's happening and they measure how wicked and tyrannical people have become. But really, do they understand what has happened that would make God so angry he destroys something that in the beginning he said was good. And so there are scriptures in the Bible that I believe people have not paid any attention to. And these scriptures explain the reasons why God would destroy the world. And it gives evidence in detail to those reasons. And it gives that evidence in such a way that a Bible-believing Christian can actually identify the circumstances, but not only the circumstances, but also the people behind those circumstances to such an extent that now they should be able to actually identify those people by name. So now in this video, I'm not actually going to mention the names of any people who God might be angry with. However, if you do pay attention and listen very carefully and actually do believe what the Bible says, you should be able to determine for yourselves the names of the people who God is extremely angry with to the point where he would want to destroy the entire world. So, will you pay attention? Do you have eyes to see and ears to hear? And will you pay attention? And hope I'm saying these words because when Isaiah was commissioned, the thing that he was told is that people would not pay attention and they would not listen to some very basic things that they should have understood. And so, if you can understand why God would be so angry he'd destroy the world, you'd do something about it, wouldn't you? So, that's the reason why I'm making this video, is because God expects some people to actually do something about it. And if you're able to identify that situation, then you're a person who could do something about it. Because you'll know exactly who it is that God's angry with and why. So keep watching the video. So now I'd like to read a couple of ver verses from the Bible from Isaiah chapter 66, which Jehovah's Witnesses and the Watchtower Society consider to be end time scriptures. And in fact, all of popular Christianity believe that these are end time scriptures. And so 
Isaiah chapter 66, the last chapter of Isaiah, is very significant to understand what's happening during the end times. And I'll read the last two verses of Isaiah chapter 66. And you'll see what I mean about being able to identify the people who caused God, Jehovah, to be extremely angry to the point of wanting to destroy the world. So here we are in Isaiah chapter 66, and I'll read verses 23 and 24. Listen carefully. It says, And it will certainly occur that from new moon to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh will come in to bow down before me, Jehovah has said. And they will actually go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that were transgressing against me. For the very worms upon them will not die and their fire itself will not be extinguished, and they must become something repulsive to all flesh." So there it is, the last two verses of Isaiah chapter 66, and it indicates what will happen a short time after the world ends. And uh, you'll see that there are indeed men being identified who all people, all flesh, will recognize were the reason that Jehovah became so angry that he wanted to destroy the entire world. And so now I intend to read a few more scriptures that identify when Jehovah did get angry and the reasons why he got angry to the point of wanting to destroy the entire world. Pay attention. So now I'm going to the book of Isaiah once again to a place where it instructs us that Jehovah intends to destroy the whole world, and we'll find out why. So I'm going to read some more scriptures from Isaiah chapter 28 this time. And first of all, I'll read what Isaiah says. And really, Isaiah is saying that we shouldn't take this as a joke that we really should take this very seriously. And so I'll read from Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 22. Listen carefully. And now do not show yourself scoffers in order that your bands may not grow strong. For there is an extermination, even something decided upon, that I have heard of from the Sovereign Lord Jehovah of Armies for all the land. So, do you understand that? Here Isaiah is recognizing why Jehovah has made a decision to end the world, to destroy it. So really what we should do now is go back into Isaiah chapter 28 and find out why. What is it that caused Jehovah to want to destroy the entire world and made him so angry that 
This was his decision. And so, really, Isaiah, after having said this, must have felt an obligation to explain to us why. And just to prove that Jehovah really is angry, I'll now go back up a few verses here in Isaiah chapter 28. And read what it says in verse 21, immediately before. It says, For Jehovah will rise up just as at Mount Perizim. He will be agitated or angry, just as in the low plain near Gibeon that he may do his deed. So what is it that agitated Jehovah to the point that he made a decision to cause an extermination in all the land? Well now in order to find that out we now need to go back a few more verses in Isaiah chapter 28. Pay attention. So it was in Isaiah verse 22 that we heard that Jehovah had decided to cause an extermination. If we go back to verse 14, just a little bit before this, we'll find out why. This is where you really do need to pay attention. So I'll start reading in verse 14 of Isaiah chapter 28. Here we go. It says, Therefore, hear the word of Jehovah, you braggarts, you rulers of this people who are in Jerusalem. Because you men have said, we have concluded a covenant with death and with Sheol. We have affected a vision, the overflowing flash flood, in case it should pass through, will not come to us, for we have made a lie our refuge. And in falsehood we have concealed ourselves. So, there you go. That's it. That is the thing that made Jehovah so angry that he wants to cause an extermination in the entire land, the end of the world. Were you paying attention to the reason why? He is addressing the rulers, the rulers of the people in Jerusalem, the rulers of God's people. And this is during the end times, if God has decided to conclude the system of things. And so some people might be thinking, well, this is all about Israel and Jerusalem in ancient times and has nothing to do with, with Jesus Christ's kingdom. Well, if that's the case, then listen carefully to what he says next. In Isaiah chapter 28, continuing now in verse 16, 
Therefore, this is what the Sovereign law, Lord, Jehovah, has said. Here I am laying as a foundation in Zion a stone, a tried stone, the precious corner of a sure foundation. Do you understand who that is? Jesus Christ. So, if you're now in my audience thinking, oh no, Isaiah 28, Isaiah chapter 28, is about Jewish people in ancient times, then after hearing that, you should change your mind. This is about Jesus Christ in modern times. Continue listening to what Isaiah has to say. Here I am, laying as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tried stone, the precious cornerstone, of a sure foundation. No one exercising faith will get panicky. Exercising faith in who? Jesus Christ. Let's continue. And I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the leveling instrument. Righteousness. The truth. And the hail must sweep away the refuge of a lie. Which lie? We have concluded a covenant with death. The hail will sweep away the refuge of this lie. And who will do this? Jesus Christ. It will be through Jesus Christ. So these rulers, the braggarts, who are ruling the people in Jerusalem, these rulers are ruling Jesus Christ's kingdom. And now, please remember at this point what Jesus Christ said, that his kingdom would become full of weeds, Satan's weeds. So now listen very carefully to what it says next. And the waters themselves will flood out the very place of concealment. And your covenant with death will certainly be dissolved. It will have no effect. The covenant with death that these rulers of God's people the people in Jesus Christ's kingdom will not work. It will completely fail. It will be dissolved. And that vision of yours with Sheol will not stand. The overflowing flash flood. Or, so what is that? The overflowing flash flood? I'll suggest to you that it's what Isaiah said in verse 22. For there is an extermination, even something decided upon, that I have heard from the Sovereign Lord Jehovah of armies for all the land. The world will end. And this is why. The overflowing flash flood, when it passes through, you must also become for it a trampling place. A trampling place. It will become like a threshing floor. The wheat will be separated from the chaff on a threshing floor. A trampling place. As often as it passes through, it will take you men away. Which men? The wheat will be taken away. And no one will notice. You won't notice.
Because morning by morning it will pass through, during the night, during the day, and during the night. And it must become nothing but a reason for quaking, for fear, trembling. It must become nothing but a reason for trembling. To make others understand what has been heard. So who are these others that are now understand what's happening? It's certainly not the rulers of God's people, the braggarts who made a covenant with death. So can you think in our recent history of any covenant made by the rulers of God's people, people claiming to be the rulers of those Christians in Jesus Christ's kingdom, a covenant with death? Well, yes, I can think of one. Listen carefully. Millions now living will never die. That is a covenant with death made by people claiming to be rulers of Jesus Christ's kingdom, who are being per personally directed by Jesus Christ in the inner rooms of the Bethel headquarters, the inner chambers. And so, let me ask you this question. Has that covenant with death been dissolved? Well, yes, it has. All of those millions of people are dead. They did not live. And yet they were told they would never die through a contract with death made by people claiming to rule Jesus Christ's kingdom. So, if that contract with death has been dissolved, what will now happen? Men will be taken away. And why will they be taken away? Think carefully about this. When Jehovah God got so angry with Sodom and Gomorrah, that he decided he was going to destroy it, what did he do? He took some men away. He took some people away out of the city. He took the righteous ones out of the city so that they might not be destroyed. And yet even these righteous ones at the time did not properly understand why. They were being forcefully taken away from a situation, a deadly situation, an extermination for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, there's a lot of reasons to quake, to be trembling at the Word of God. Do you see why Jehovah is so angry? Let me explain it. Millions now living will never die. You positively will not die. Those are the exact same words of Satan said to Eve and through which Adam himself was deceived. Words from Satan, out of the mouth of Satan. And so what has happened to Jesus Christ's kingdom, which has been undermined by Satan's weeds, is that Satan has had a spectacular success teaching the people in Jesus Christ's kingdom to believe 
the exact same lie that Satan told thousands and thousands of years before. So now, in our post-modern era, thousands of years later, Satan himself is able to stand in front of Jehovah God and say, See, even the people in Jesus Christ's kingdom believe the same lie I told to Eve. Do you really understand what would make God so angry that he would cause an extermination throughout all the land? Are you paying attention? Do you have eyes to see and ears to hear? Satan is now able to taunt Jehovah right to his face through what the rulers of Jesus Christ's kingdom have done in the time of the end. How truly repulsive. What an abomination. Do you see how really disgusting that is? If you're not being repulsed, then I suggest that you haven't been paying attention, even though you have eyes to see and ears to hear. So I could probably end the video right here. However, what I'd like to do is show my audience how through using the Old Testament, we can all understand how Jehovah told from the beginning the finale. He knew right from the start what it would be like at the end. And so in order to do that, I'll make some bib biblical connections to prophecies that are indeed end time prophecies and specifically one in the New Testament. Before I go there, I'd like you to take some things from Isaiah chapter 28 with you, and then you can see the connection. So the first thing I'd like you to take is that it's Jesus Christ, the tried stone, who dissolves this covenant with death, and justice and righteousness now become the measuring line. And so, what will Jesus Christ do to these men who have done such a repulsive thing that Jehovah wants to destroy the entire world? Well, Jesus Christ is going to do something that makes sure these men never have a chance to do the same thing again. So, remember, it's Jesus Christ. Take that with you. Also, remember that the reason why God, Jehovah, wants to destroy the entire world is because what these men, the rulers of Jesus Christ's kingdom, have done. And that they're like modern day Judas Iscariots, the son of destruction. Take that with you also. Also remember that they've made a covenant with death that is now proven after time, almost a hundred years, that it's a lie. But not just a lie, it's the lie. Millions now living will never die. You positively will not die. And something else I'd like you to take to the New Testament with me is that there's others now who understand. So perhaps we'll discover who those others are.
So now I'm going to go to 2 Thessalonians and make the connections. I think you'll be very impressed at how Jehovah knew right from the beginning what the end would be like. And here's one way to do that by connecting Old Testament scriptures to the New Testament, which was written perhaps a thousand years later. So here we are now in 2 Thessalonians. So in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we know this is an end time scripture because it talks about the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. The first verse, it says, however, brothers, respecting the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him. Also, this scripture is about the day of Jehovah. So if we continue to verse 2, it says, not to be quickly shaken from your reason, nor to be excited, either through an inspired expression, millions now living will never die. An inspired expression. Inspired by who? You positively will not die. Or through a verbal message, or through a letter, as though from us, to the effect that the day of Jehovah is here. So if we've reached that point where we understand why the world will be destroyed and why Jehovah is so angry that he would want to do that, then I would suggest that the day of Jehovah is here. So now let's make the connection Further down in Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, Let no one seduce you in any manner, because it will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness gets revealed, the son of destruction. So can you make that connection now? These are the people who are the reason why Jehovah wants to destroy the entire world. The sons of destruction. The modern day Judas Iscariots. Rulers of Jesus Christ's kingdom. Did you make that connection to Isaiah chapter 28? But let's go further. How? What will happen to these men and who will be responsible or accountable for making that happen? If we continue, we'll find out. It says, Then indeed the lawless one will be revealed. And so certainly in this video, you should now know the actual names of those men, the rulers in Jesus Christ's kingdom. So this lawless one, the son of destruction, has been revealed. But let's continue. Whom the Lord Jesus Christ will do away with by the spirit of his mouth, I shall make justice the measuring line and righteousness the leveling instrument. Remember Isaiah chapter 28? And who would do that? Jesus Christ. The spirit of his mouth. And bring to nothing by the manifestation of his presence. So you can expect that when Jesus Christ appears these men, these repulsive men, the sons of destruction, will be done away with. 
So, do you see the connection to Isaiah chapter 28? It's Jesus Christ who dissolves this covenant with death and sets matters straight regarding all these things. So, what about the lie? Is that mentioned here? Well, let's continue. It says in verse 11 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, So that is why God lets an operation of error go to them, that they may get to believing the lie. And remember, in Isaiah chapter 28, that these men made a lie their refuge. And here in 2 Thessalonians, it's calling it the lie. The covenant with death, millions now living, will never die. You positively will not die. The lie, the original lie, told in the Garden of Eden to Eve. So now, I'll continue reading in verse 13. Because in regards to all these things, there's another group of people, and I'm going to suggest that this group are the others who do understand what's happening during the time of the end. It says in verse 13, However, we are obligated to thank God always for you, brothers loved by Jehovah. Because God selected you from the beginning for salvation by sanctifying you with spirit and by your faith in the truth. So, now I'm going to ask you to remember what it said in Isaiah chapter 28. No one exercising faith will get panicky. So certainly these are the others. Brothers loved by Jehovah. So now if Jehovah really does love these brothers, then they're not in that situation.